kind introduction. Um, yeah, in the next 20 minutes, um, I want to talk with you about artificial intelligence in the European Union. And um, yeah, as I said, I'm representing the Free Software Foundation Europe, and um, we are a charity that empowers users to control technology. And uh, yeah, we do believe that uh, this is done with uh, the help of free software. And if I can click my slides, I would uh, then go to the next one. Ah, there we go. Yeah, and I think also a learning from this conference is that free software is pretty much everywhere these days. And this also means that free software is a lot on AI, and there will be more free software in AI in the next years. And that's why we need to think about it. So we need to think about how to regulate it and um, how free software can help um, yeah, to transform uh, the world into a better place than here. And therefore, we came up with some criteria. And first of all, we do believe that AI should or must respect fundamental rights. Also, it needs to be transparent, it needs to be fair and accessible. And in the end, it should not discriminate us, but it should help us. So, and with these criteria, we come up to the conclusion that we need free software, so open source for this. So, because only with free software we can guarantee that we can at least check if fundamental rights are protected, for example, because we have transparent code, and we can also check if um, yeah, people are discriminated because of the transparent code. But there are also other reasons. Um, free software helps to foster innovation, also a learning in general, whenever we talk about free software open source from this conference. Because first of all, we don't have to reinvent the wheel over and over again. And with free software, we have the right to modify the software so we can build on what's already out there. And thus, um, yeah, we can be quicker with innovation. And that's why we also do believe that for AI, we should use free software open source. And also, this is also a learning from, I think, the corona crisis, that transparency um, also leads to trust. Um, just think about the tracing apps we had, um, or still have, and only due to the fact that the code was transparent, we could check how our health data, for example, have been handled. And these transparency lead to the fact that people trust the software and use it. And therefore, we need transparent software, and this is guaranteed with free software or open source licenses. So when we talk about um, regulating AI, then we also need to talk about the um, current um, proposal of the European Union. The Commission uh, proposed um, a law on regulating AI. Unfortunately, there is no saying on open source in it. But um, we have also the European Parliament, and the European Parliament um, started to um, yeah, amend to the Commission proposal. And um, for the European Parliament, open source free software plays a role. And what they did until now, so from the jury committee, this is the legal committee of the European Parliament, they submitted a text and uh, they want an exclusion for open source AI systems until those systems are put into service or are made available on the market. And I think that's a very good idea because we all know that um, free software projects are sometimes, or hopefully most of the times, are developed openly. This means you can see and follow every step of the development, but also this means that there might be times when there shouldn't be any liability to the ones who contribute or who think about um, bringing such a concept into life. But as soon as there's money involved, then there should be also liability involved. And this is something which is like kind of different to proprietary software. And this concept has been like with the AI regulation first introduced in the European lawmaking process. And um, I will tell you later about this. Also, we continue in other upcoming proposals, not only on AI. And this is very important that the European Union, especially the European Parliament, understood in the meantime that there are advantages um, of free software and open source software, and that there also needs to be a specific regulation around it. 
First, we've seen uh, exclusion in the copyright directive for code sharing platforms. Now we see it in the AI regulation um, in terms of liability. And um, we had a very strong position from the European Parliament on AI in general. Um, so this is not connected to the lawmaking which is taking place, but this was just like a resolution by the European Parliament. And that was also highly interesting because um, they said that the principle of public money, public code, PMPC, should also apply to AI. So public money, public code means whenever governments, public bodies, and so on, so whenever there's public money involved, then the results should also be made publicly available under a free and open source license. So we are running a campaign on this and um, called Public Money, Public Code. And the principle, this idea, was put into this resolution of the European Parliament. So they do believe that whenever, pub whenever public bodies are using or procuring AI, then it should be released under a free and open source software license because for the reasons of transparency, which leads to trust, but also um, in terms of innovation that we can, or that we don't have to reinvent the wheel over and over again. Also, they refer to the open source strategy of the European Commission. So a couple of years ago, the European Commission also came to the idea that it might be a good idea um, to release software under a free and open source software license. Because this is not only on AI, but I mean, administrations all over the world are doing more or less every time the same. So there's no need yeah, to procure software for every single administration, but it's way better to collaborate, share costs and expertise, modify the software, and also as taxpayers' money, our money is involved, it should also be given to us in the end, and we should also have access to the software. And also, the European Parliament said that free software is good for innovation. Though they understood and they have seen in the last years that it's a very good idea to use public funds and invest in free software because it not only helps administration to save money, but also like to boost um, innovation and thus industry and business. The bad thing about this resolution is it's not legally binding. But the good thing about it, all of these principles have been voted with a huge majority. So there have been only a few members of the European Parliament voted against it. So all big groups coming from left to right voted in favor of this idea. So we have a huge majority in general in the European Parliament when it comes to the idea of investing in free software. And this is also true then for AI, and this will help us a lot. And another interesting file, um, which just like um, was released in the beginning of the year, is the Declaration on Digital Rights. Again, proposed by the European Commission, but this paper shall, should lead like um, digital rights of the European Union for the next decade. And unfortunately, um, there have been only references to the Berlin and Tallinn Declaration from the Commission in this paper. In these both declarations, already the member states agreed on investing more in free software, whatever this means. Like, what is more, right? Is one euro more already more enough? So, or, um, uh, enough. And here again, the European Parliament amended uh, to this position of the European Commission. And they say that um, they see free software as a way to ensure transparency in the use of algorithms and AI and they are highlighting the importance of promoting trustworthy standards and, whenever op uh, possible, open source standards. So whatever this technically means, so I mean we have to maybe modify the wording here a bit, but the European Parliament understood the importance of transparent AI and also want to bring this into the Declaration of Digital Rights. So even if we won't find a concrete saying on AI, and free software in the AI Act itself. There are surrounding documents these days, um, mainly amended by the European Parliament, highlighting the importance of free software and trying to make sure that there are also funds allocated to the um, free software projects out there dealing with AI. 
And also what is um, super interesting is that the um, beside of AI is the Cyber Resilience Act. And with the Cyber Resilience Act, um, the um, European Commission just like also released a paper, and there they now understood itself that after the amendments from the European um, um, Parliament that the upcoming laws should include sayings on free software. And here the European Commission understood that free software is an enabler for innovation and research. And this is also highly interesting because now the European Commission also comes up with these texts and we see that it's going to be more and more important in the European Union that they have a saying on free software and that they include parts on free software open source in the legislation and that will help us a lot not only to have more free software but that there are also funds allocated to this. And um, this is basically mainly what we are trying to do um, to lobby in the European Union but also in the member states um, that there are um, yeah, more laws taking notes and remarks on um, the special needs and um, yeah, the special structure of free software and that there can't be like a general saying on all software projects, but we need to have um, specific sayings on free software and open source um, as well. So what's ahead of us? So in the, yeah, pretty much next month, um, the European Parliament will discuss these positions with the European Council, which are the member states of the European Union. And um, here in the member states, um, I would say they are like um, not so much into it like the European Parliament. So it will be super interesting to see um, how these negotiations uh, will um, turn out in the end. And this is also a call for you. So whenever you talk to um, your local governments, um, strengthen the position of the European Parliament because this will help us in these negotiations between the Council and the European Parliament. So member states also need to understand, as the Commission just recently did, that free software plays an important role, not only on AI, but on all digital um, files. Um, but especially these days in the AI Act, maybe also in the AI Liability Act, the Product um, Liability Act, uh, which have been also just recently released, the Digital um, Rights um, Declaration, but also now here in the Cyber Resilient Act. And by the end of the year, um, hopefully we will first have the declaration um, being voted on, and then afterwards in the next year, we will work again on the AI Act or continue to work on the AI Act, and then also Cyber Resilience Act and AI Liability Act. And what we are doing from FSFE is to use this um, mentioned campaign um, public money, public code. Um, so four years ago, um, we just came up with this campaign, not with the idea. So the idea is, um, I would say, um, way longer around. But with this campaign, we are reaching out to decision makers all over Europe and try to convince them that um, we want to have legislation in place, place that um, publicly financed software developed for the public sector be made publicly available under a free and open source software license or to say it in short, um, if it's public money, it should be public code as well. So this campaign had um, um, more than 30,000 signatures um, so far from individuals, but even more important, um, also a lot of organizations um, signed this, more than 200 organizations um, from all over Europe, and not only like the um, usual suspects like, uh, I don't know, Wikimedia and uh, the Open Knowledge Foundation and so on, but also it's a, it's a widespread campaign which is supported by yeah, the middle of the society, let's say it like this. And also what's super interesting and what's, what I at least um, have never seen before by administrations itself. So for example, the city of Barcelona signed this campaign, um, administrations from Sweden, from Germany signed this campaign. Next, there will be an administration from Luxembourg signing this campaign. So there are also already administration um, behind this campaign and um, promote this idea and say that um, it's a very good idea also for their work yeah, to 
um, go in the direction of public money, public code, and we've seen not only in the European Parliament these votes in the resolution I just mentioned, but we have, especially on a local level, like municipalities, cities, uh, city councils, and stuff like this. So there we see a lot of progress, um, and um, yeah, they understand that it's a good idea to collaborate with other municipalities, with other administrations, as said, doing more or less um, the same over and over again. So that's why they should share their um, procurement procedures, for example, so to procure software together or to divide it into parts. So um, one municipality procures one part, another one the other part. So, and by thus, um, they can also see that um, after a very short time, they can save a lot of money and also the products um, are way more tailored to their specific needs. And this is particularly important because the four freedoms of free software to use, study, share, and improve help also administrations. Um, we've just recently had a debate about digital sovereignty, yeah, so that we are able to not run into a vendor logins, but to be um, to have the control over the technology, and this is also for administrations very important, yeah? And to be able to modify the software quickly. Again, here we have seen this with the corona tracing apps, for example. So it's possible to have a cross-border communication, and uh, the only thing which uh, needed to be changed, more or less, was a translation. It was a language thing, so that um, my Spanish rather COVID app also works with the German Corona anti-tracing app, so that there is an um, exchange of data, but without interfering with privacy. And at the same time, we've been able to, whenever we have seen bugs, to quickly fix them, and we didn't have to go to a vendor and ask them, please do this for us, and then maybe the vendor tells us, no, um, we want extra money for this, or however, and so on. So we are able, as administrations, as society, to modify the software to our tailored needs. And that's why um, yeah, administrations also understand for their um, daily work that it's so important to use more free software. And um, yeah, here you can um, see some of the organizations who signed this. And this is also a call for you. So individually, please feel free to sign this campaign. It helps us a lot. Um, we have seen it again during the AI Act, but also in general meetings with decision makers that this campaign is a game changer in terms of lobbying. Um, but also if you are representing an organization, please feel free to reach out to us. And even better, if you are representing an administration or know somebody from administration, please use this campaign to explain the concept of free software and why it's important that public administrations should invest in this. And just to give you a last number on this, so up to 27% of the revenue of IT companies these days are made by public administration. So just imagine how our world would look like if we invest all of these funds into free software and not proprietary software anymore. Thanks a lot. <laughs>